Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at what is very likely the most common bomber hinge of all time. This is the uh, ubiquitous 3029 double acting uh, spring hinge is what it is. If you've ever seen a door that double acts in a restaurant from the you know counter area to the you know kitchen area, clank, 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 it's very likely this hinge or a imitation of it. Uh, this is the uh, most common double acting spring hinge there really is. Why? Well, they're effective. They do the job. They work. They're relatively easy to install. Um, you know, they are better than, uh, you know, the other ideas or types of hardware that would permit a door to double act. When you're hanging a door that is, you know, 100 pounds, inch and three quarter, full size door, the, there are certainly other options when it comes to double act such a door. Um, but those other options are generally going to be either substantially more expensive material-wise or uh, more work to get them installed. Uh, you can spend less money than this hinge, uh, but you'll, you'll do more work possibly to get it installed. So the 3029 is a series of spring hinges that are double acting. Bomber makes a complement of both double acting and single acting spring hinges. The 3029 is available in different sizes, which is really a reference to the size of the hinge, certainly physically different. Um, that difference in size really relates to the door thickness range that it will work with, so that's more important. You can get it with this standard flat sort of button tip that's here, or a ball tip. It would be a CL3029. Smaller sizes, larger sizes, smaller doors, thinner doors. Larger doors, thicker doors. It's capable of all of that. Generally, you'll see three of these installed on a door. Uh, most certainly three when it's a heavier door. Possibly two if it's a relatively light door. This is in the 600 finish. That means a couple of things. It means it's made of steel. And that also means that it is in a prime coat finish. Why would you want prime coat? Well, you're going to paint the hinge. And there's no reason to spend extra money to have a satin chrome plating on it. Because there is a substantial difference between just prime coated and then doing a finish on it, whether it be polished brass or oil rub bronze or um, satin chrome, like I said before. Being made of steel, you can order this in any finish that Bomber can do on steel, such as uh, zinc dichrome, uh, pardon me, uh, just a zinc, a, a regular zinc, which would be 603, not dichromate, a silvery color zinc. Uh, 601, bright black Japan. You can do 632 uh, polished brass, 633 satin brass, 639 satin bronze, 646 satin chrome, 652, uh, pardon me, 646 satin nickel, 651 polished chrome, 652 satin chrome, 640 oil rub bronze. I know I've missed some. Um, but if it's on steel and they can plate it or whatever, they can certainly uh, supply that to you. These hinges are priced per hinge. You would never order just one hinge. You would order them in the quantity required based on the application. That very likely is going to be three. Um, certainly it will be if it's a full-size door. And um, there is either a very small amount of work. Well, there could be no work needed to be done to the door to a very small amount of work, work or you could make it more a bit more elaborate by radiusing the door edge uh, down as well. You'll see these installed in single doors and double doors, and you d may not really notice them, but if you've, again, if you've seen a door that double acts, you know, restaurants, I've seen these doors in movie theaters from back of, you know, operation to a, you know, major artery corridor within the theater. Uh, you see them all the time. Obviously not fire rated. You could not install these on a door that would be fire rated. Um, so let's do this. Let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look at all the supporting documentation. Okay, here is the item that we are indeed looking at. Uh, the 3029-6. This is a generic stock image. Speaking of images, I do have uh, some actual photographs we can take a look at. This shows the screws, the two tension pins, and the tension rod that you'll get. The hinge itself. Uh, an end view, so to speak. Just have it tipped up. You would never see the door, you would never see the hinge in this sort of fashion. One leaf is always going to be tucked behind. 
Both will be tucked when the door is in the closed position. If this was tucked over here, then the door would be open 90 degree, 90 degree to one direction. And if this was tucked over and this was open, it would be open in the other direction. Uh, let's take a look at some additional images. In this image here, the door would occupy this space over here with the hinge completely just laid open. A bit hard to understand it in this orientation. That's the back side of the hinge. And then your screw pack, your two tension rods and your, uh, your tension pins and your tension rod. There we go. So let's take a look at the extended description information that's listed down below. Mortise type. This hinge can be mortised. We'll talk about that when we get to the installation instructions. It's non-template, which means the location of these screw holes does not match any pattern in particular. Made of steel and is indeed non-handed. Now here's the important part. The six inch is really not important. The height of the hinge is really not important. What's important is the door thickness. So you call and say I need a double acting spring hinge, a bomber 3029. My first, my very first question is what's the door thickness? Then I know what size to prescribe. If it's inch and three quarter, I'm looking at a six inch or larger. If it's inch and a half, I'm looking at a five inch or a six inch. Uh, and then you go to the other particulars, which would be minimum door height, seven foot, Maximum width for two hinges would be 75 pounds and 107 pounds if you're using three hinges and then three foot um, on three hinges and two foot eight, 32 inch for two hinges. Um, these are general guidelines that the manufacturer has found to work uh, pretty reliably in their application. Um, does that mean that you cannot use a six eight door? Of course it doesn't. Um, that is a bit misleading and it's a valid question. Yes, you can hang a 6-8 door on this. What they're really trying to also say, though, is you wouldn't use this on a 20-pound hollow core 1 foot 6 by 6-8 inch and 3 eighths door. It's way too much hinge. So they're trying to get you to understand that this is a, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of spring that's packed in these barrels. Okay, The hinge, by the way, weighs about 4.3 pound each. 4.3 pounds each. Door flange may be either surface applied to the edge of the door or mortised into the edge of the door. We'll go over that. The jam flange is always surface applied to the jam. Do not use on doors with hinge edge beveled. Um, let's, well, okay, we'll talk about that when we talk about prepping the door. Packed with all wood screws, that's true. Well, you're not going to really see this hinge on a metal application at all, but they do make a 3029. Uh, six by four and a half, which means that one leaf is meant for a templated pattern on a metal door. So you could put this into a hollow metal cased opening frame and a typical prepped steel door. And assuming that you have sized the door smaller or the frame larger, this will work. Sold per hinge and not per pair. When you purchase one, you will be sent one hinge. Replacement tension pin is this item here. And the rod is this item here. People do call and say, hey, I, I've lost my tension pin. I need another one. There you go. Now, as we move forward, let's take a look at the template and installation instructions. And that's really where the understanding of this hinge begins. This is all included with your hardware. When you order it, you're going to get your hinge, your tension pins, your rod, and your paperwork template. Uh, okay, so this document is... Um, this is almost everything you need to know, um, in, in fact. Uh, now, this is a 6 inch, so it just happens to be that the height of this leaf is 6 inch. Okay, great. Um, however, what is, again, more important to know is that door thickness range, which is here. Okay, inch and a quarter to inch and three quarter. And I guess what I'm driving at is, um, yeah, you know what? I need a six-inch hinge is the, what the client will say. 
How do you know you need a six inch hinge? Oh, no, I just need that. Well, if you'd kindly tell me the door thickness. Well, it's two inch. I need the big six inch hinge. No, you, you don't need a six inch hinge. You need a bigger hinge um, or you're going to notch the door out. Um, so that's that's the point of all of that. Now, the part on the template that's actually the uh, information that's important to know is how do you size the door to fit into the opening? So at some point you're going to start with either a net door size or a finished opening size and then you have to calculate what needs to happen at that point based on how you would plan on attaching the door flange. This is the door flange here. This part right here is the door flange. So in a single door opening or a double door opening you're going to use either the A or the B dimension depending on what you're dealing with. Let's just say it's a single door, most common. Your frame opening is going to be equal to um, your actual door width plus A. Uh, said that another way, um, you know, actual door width uh, frame opening size minus actual door width is, is the A dimension. So you're starting with something, either a frame, a, a finished opening or an actual door width. You might say, well, I've got a three, uh, a three, um, a 36 inch cased opening frame and I can't change that. Well, you've got to change the door then, or the door has to be made to suit, uh, in width the requirement. That's where the A dimension comes in, which is here. It's either half inch or seven sixteenths. So 36 minus half or 7 sixteenths is either 35 and a half or 35 and 9 sixteenths, obviously for an actual door width. Whether or not you mortise the flange to the edge of the door is where that sixteenth of an inch comes to play. So what they're driving at with that is um, when you have your door Okay, you're either going to mortise out for the flange that will reside in this space here, or you're going to surface mount it. Okay, and that's the difference. Uh, I think really what's going to come into play here is um, how much room you have, and it's right, it's illustrated right here. You may or may not mortise that flush. Now, if you mortise it flush to the edge of the door, you'll have a somewhat smaller margin between the edge of the door and the cased opening frame, meaning you know, you've got your cased opening frame here. And you've got your door sitting in here. You know, really talking about the space that's here. So it's always going to be a quarter inch, you know, minus potentially less, you know, 30 thousandths of an inch. So it's always going to be a large gap. It won't change very much. Um, on the hinge side, um, now let's just say that you're not mortising it and you have a half inch total. So a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. Now you can take the opposite side And you can make that smaller if you wanted, and you would then take that square edge door and you would radius the edge of the door. You could do that. Most people don't in this application because you still have, let's say, a quarter inch gap over here. You could have an eighth inch up here, whatever you really like, but an eighth inch is pretty typical. You might want it to be a quarter just so that it matches, I guess. But over on the lock side, what would be the lock side can be either left at, you know, half of the A dimension, or you could radius the door edge, break these edges so that you could fit, you know, the door into the space a little bit better. Um, most people just leave them square edge. And that's where I had said earlier, sometimes it's little work to get the door installed. You've got a three foot door, plane it down to 35 and a half. I would suggest taking a quarter inch off either side Get the door in the opening. Well, first of all, attach the hinges 
uh, to the jam, get the door in the opening, shim it, and then attach your, um, well, you'll have to have the door in the, um, you know, in the, in the open position, so to speak, but that's how you'd go about doing it. There's not much to it. Um, and that's really what is on the template telling you what you need to consider. Now, do not use on doors with hinge edge beveled. And the reason that that's important is it might become obvious. You have your hinge. You have your door. The door's got to be square edge. If the door's not square edge and it's it's beveled edge, that door is going to end up going like this or the opposite way. I've had customers call me and say, "Hey, my doors don't my doors don't meet really well in the center of the opening. It's like like they're they don't close they they don't close correctly." Well, what do you mean? Well, they they like stand open of each other. Um. And now I'm starting to realize, okay, put a, put a combination square on the edge of the door. Is the door square or is it beveled? And then they realize that that door had a beveled edge on it. And now the door just stands at that three degree, which is what the bevel is, a skew of the opening. So it looks like that. The door has got to be square edge. It's got to be truly square or it will not sit in the opening. Maybe not such a big deal when you have a single door. You're not going to notice it very much. But in a pair of doors, you'll very much notice it, uh, certainly. Invert hinges on one door of a pair for proper centering. They literally want you to, if you do a pair of doors, they want you to have in the hinge, okay, you've got your tension collar on one side. On the other door, Put this so it points towards down the bottom of the door on this door. They find that it makes the centering of the doors more accomplished. Uh, and there you go. If you're doing a pair of doors, you're going to have to take that frame opening. You're going to have to uh, subtract the B dimension from it and then divide that by two, and that will be your net door width. You know, the problem is you might have a door that you can't change the size of. You might have something, you know, a door that you're not going to change the size of because of whatever reason, but you're going to build a cased opening frame around it. That's certainly less common, but people do call and say, I need to build a cased opening frame. Fine. Um, what's your net door size? We then add the A or B dimension in the formula and then derive at the finished opening of the cased opening, uh, the finished size of the cased opening frame is what it is. Now, next document, installation instructions. Not sure why that's taking so long to load. Okay. Um, now, this is a two-page affair. The first page, if you're installing three hinges, this is literally how you're going to install the top two. Soldier stack them as they are calling out. That's because the top hinge of the door does 70% of the work of just simply carrying the load of the door itself. Two hinges will go up top. If you're using, uh, pardon me, if you're using a three hinge installation, two will go up top. If you have a very light door, you'll have one at the top and one at the bottom. This bottom hinge doesn't carry any weight. Uh, very, you know, very much. It doesn't do much of the job of closing the door. It's just there to keep the door in the center of the opening, from what I understand. Now, this is the installation instructions, and they do duplicate that data down here. Um, so let's just go through it. Remove the tension from each barrel by inserting the tension rod into the uh, tension adjustment hole. Rotate in direction of the arrow as shown and remove the tension pin. This hinge does not have any tension on it when it comes from the factory. Some do. This one did not. In 3029s, I don't believe ever do. If they do, however, you'll remove that tension. They clearly did at one time because their installation instructions say to remove the tension. So locate the hinges as shown in figure one, which is down here. That's figure one. This is where you'll place them. We just discussed that. The door leaf may be mortised or surface applied, as we've discussed. 
align the center line of door with center line of frame and secure the frame leaf. So what they're saying is the center line of the jam, the center line of the door, the center line of the hinge, that should all be together. Um, so clearly what you're going to need to do is um, get the hinges attached to the jam. You're going to need to mark hole locations through the hinge on the door leaf because you won't have any tension set on the hinge at all when you're physically attaching the hinge uh, to the opening or you might do that in reverse mark on the frame where the hinges are to go attach the hinges to the door and then bring the entire assembly to the frame pre-drill the holes and install it uh, for best alignment of double doors mountain hinges one side up with the tension pins which are shown with the tension collar, which are shown here, and the other side uh, down. Shims may be necessary under the edges of the frame flanges for door alignment. Um, one thing I was about to tell this client with these doors is, well, your jam must be very much twisted. The 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 wood frame itself must be, you know, not true plumb level and square, um, and that you're probably going to need to shim the door. But then we discovered it was indeed a beveled edge door. Place door in the closed position. Wedge door up from uh, floor until plumb. Insert the tension rod. So what they're saying is now that you have everything mechanically fastened, the hinges are attached to the frame and the door, get it all into the opening, shim it up, and then start to set tension. Do not exceed five holes of tension. Insert tension rod into the tension adjustment hole. Rotate in the direction of the arrow, which would be clockwise if your tension collar is pointed towards the top of the door. Insert the tension pin and then remove the tension rod. Increase or decrease that tension so that the door operates correctly. If you find that you're exceeding five holes and the door does not behave correctly, uh, it's sagging, it's falling, it's hitting the other door or jam, you'd need to add a hinge. Um, but if your door is grossly over you know, the 107 pound mark, I believe is what it was with three hinges. You, you can expect it not to work at, at all. Um, adding more hinges may not solve the problem. Uh, it usually does, however. Although, with more stored energy on those hinges, you will increase the rate of speed that the door comes through the opening. That's to be sure. Um, and that covers the, uh, the installation instructions that are here. Now, let's do this. Okay, now we have a cut sheet that we can look at, and this is out of the, this link is down below as well. This is from the full line catalog, and it does show the series of 3029 hinges. And you'll note that they make it from 3 inch through 8 inch. That's nice to know, uh, but again, it's the door thickness. You can also do the ball tip, which is a CL, and it'll look like this. They do that in 5, 6, and 7 inch sizes. They can do some sizes that have the template leaf on the other side which is shown here or referred to here you can see that that has a standard hinge leaf a templated hinge leaf and then the jam flange here now as we scroll down here's the important part this will show you what you need based on your door thickness and weight and width of door so Let's just focus in and, uh, on something here. How thick is the door? I've said that's the question I ask all the time. If it's inch and three quarter, you have lots of options. Everything from here, from six inch, down to eight inch, you can use. Okay. What's down here are the half template version, which is down here. So we'll just kind of ignore that area. So you have six, seven, and eight that you can use. Then go to your door weight column here or here you say to yourself yeah um, I've got a 3070 it's about six pounds per square foot six and a quarter uh, so six and a quarter times 21 I'm looking at 131 pound door okay let's go back to our chart yeah so right there if it was indeed six and a quarter pound per foot 21 square feet you would be looking at 30 29 8 for an inch and three quarter thick door. Okay. 
three hinges, in fact. Um, would three six inch work? Yeah, I'm pretty sure three six inch hinges would work for that. Um, but you know, the chart says eight inch, that's the bottom line. So, and, and I say six inch will work because I've sold three six inch hinges for decades for 3070 doors. Um, but the chart says eight inch and there you go. Really handy in that regard. They do say two in a box. They are sold as each. People don't need to buy them in multiples of two. If you need three hinges, we're not going to force you to buy four is the point. Now, there is a link below this video here. Let's get to the item that we're working on. A link below this video to the manufacturer's page here. When you click on that, you're going to be able to pull up the bomber page in our site. That's going to show you not only all of the bomber products that we sell, but also uh, by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. I would certainly recommend you review uh, this catalog if you are not sure of what double acting product to use. Bomber makes more than just the 3029. Um, their 7800 series is a horizontal spring pivot and is available, again, in different sizes for different capacities and weights of doors, hold open and non-hold open functions. And you may be able to use this double acting horizontal floor pivot uh, in lieu of a 3029. Okay. If you were to try that, you'd be looking at either a uh, 7811, which would be a hold open version. You obviously don't have a hold open functionality on the 3029s um, if you're at 90 pounds, or a 78 um, a 7814 uh, HD at 150 pounds. One of these is hold open and the other is not. And I think that's, uh, there should be a table here Right, not a table, but here it is. 7813 is hold open, is non hold open. 14 is, uh, um, forgive me, they're both non hold open. Let's go back. Okay, so they do not offer a hold open version in the 150 pound capacity. Um, and the difference between these two is one will uh, include the jam bracket that's listed here. Okay. Uh, you would want the jam bracket if you won't or cannot pierce into the floor with fasteners. So that would be another double acting uh, product. They also have these uh, spring products that you see, you'll see them in, in half doors and very commonly in courtrooms, in fact. They've got those small 30 inch tall double acting doors. Uh, they'll use the 7000 series very commonly in those applications. Okay. Uh, lots of spring assisted product here and worthwhile to go through. Bomber actually also, just one final thing, manufactures a comprehensive line of lavatory hardware. Why would you want Bomber's lavatory hardware? Uh, well, because it's made of solid brass, which means you'll be able to obtain a architectural finish. If you want a true polished chrome, um, it will look quite gorgeous over a brass base material. Or if you want polished brass, there would be no substitution uh, over having a brass base material for those high-end uh, restroom applications and, ho and hotels, uh, you know, places of that nature um, that you'll have the high-end hardware. Okay, let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, suffice it to say that when we were going through the catalog, we did not touch on nearly all things Bomber. Um, they just have a comprehensive offering of, of everything. Um, let's talk about setting that tension. For every 3029 hinge you order, you'll get two tension pins. Bomber does an exceptional job at never missing the tension pins in a, in a uh, shipment. For every order you place, you'll get at least one tension rod. You'll need to insert a tension uh, pin into each tension collar, and that's the arrow right there that they're referring to. You can't really, I suppose, there we go. So when the door is in place, you'll insert that tension rod and you're going to rotate it clockwise. As you do, you increase spring tension. As you do, you, redo, you reveal new additional holes and you'll take that 
tension. Pin and set it in place. Now we've got tension on that on that spring hinge on that leaf. You'll obviously do that on both sides. Then you're in really good shape. Okay. Five holes of tension on there. And because I've opened that package, I will just install the other pin so that there's no chance that they get loose, uh, you know, lost. Same concept with the other side, rotate it clockwise. Then you'll insert a tension pin back there. And now I've got tension on both leaves. Okay. That's what the tension pins will look like when they're installed. That's how you adjust tension, set it, increase it, decrease it. Um, the last thing I'd like to point out to you, right here. The Bomber logo, and right above it, it says Made in USA, a fact that Bomber is quite proud of, as am I to represent them. Everything they make is in uh, is is domestically manufactured in North Carolina. Their plating plant is right near the North South Carolina border, and um, that's a fact that Bomber is quite quite proud of. As am I to represent them. Any questions on the 3029-6 and a 600 finish, or any other Bomber product? Please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.